kudos, Pastor. Um, the interesting thing about this, um, I haven't watched all the videos yet. I've got some catching up to do from yesterday. But I saw your video and I was like, I was just thinking about this yesterday, you know. And I wanted to say, I, first of all, I totally agree with you. Um, and the reason I wanted to make this video response was to share my own um, story in dealing with this issue. There's so many different, um, it, it's a very controversial topic, I understand. There's people that don't believe in it. We've even had one in a chat room one time on a Yahoo who uh, came in. He was Baptist, I think. And not to say that all Baptists would say this, but this individual did. That anybody who believed in speaking in tongues was going, in, going to hell. I don't think so. <laughs> See, the thing is, I agree with you. Okay, let me make that clear I do agree with you but my experience is that I do believe in speaking in tongues but I wanted to clarify you know what I believe of it I'm still got a lot to learn yet about the speaking in tongues some of it's a little bit um, hard for me to grasp but I had a, my first experience with speaking in tongues and things like that I had been around some Pentecostals um, in Louisiana a lot of them or the more legalistic type um, can't cut your hair had to wear long skirts and you know things like that and they did believe in speaking in tongues and that you know like you said that everybody had to speak in tongues um, and had to develop that gift and you know things like that and I went to one church and stuff that um, or a few churches that believe this way and I never really felt comfortable with it because um, I was raised Southern Baptist and they don't believe in it. My grandmother and I are kind of in a disagreement now because of it because she believes that it's known tongue, you know, like Greek and uh, Japanese or Spanish or something like that that it's talking about. Um, but after a while and I went to this one church I had my own experience with it um, I, it was kind of a pressure it I was kind of pressure I felt pressured when this happened uh, it was one of those they were running around you know the the sanctuary and things like that and one of them came up to me and was like are you saved and I was like yes I am you know I had been Christian for a little while at this time uh, still a new new Christian you know still had a lot to learn obviously but I had been a Christian for at least a couple of years or so and um, then they asked me about you know the Holy Spirit and, and speaking in tongues and I'm like okay you know I just went along with it kind of thing and then they took us to a room where they tried to instruct us about how to speak in tongues and and things like that and I kept trying I kept trying to do it and it just didn't feel right nothing about it felt right this whole situation and the, and the whole idea of it just didn't feel right to me because of what I had been raised to believe as a Southern Baptist I had my doubts um, I was really questioning things and then all of a sudden I quit trying I just I quit I was like this is ridiculous I'm just gonna quit and all of a sudden I started I just kind of moved my tongue and it just happened I started having this strange utterance and I was like wow you know I just something told me and I could be wrong there's I, I don't have anything biblical to really support my experience so maybe I'm, I could be wrong. I don't know, but I believe that it was from God and he allowed me to do it, um, even if just for that moment, to open up my mind and so that I'd stop putting him in a box. And it was later I started reading other scriptures about, um, you know, how they were, and there was a group of men and stuff and they were asked, well, have you been baptized? Um, 
in the Holy Spirit, and they didn't know what that meant at the time. That was before the time of Pentecost, if I understand correctly. And he said, well, you've been baptized with uh, with water. He says, now, uh, now you should be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Well, I think a lot of times, and that's what a lot of the a lot of them use, I think that it's taken out of context. I think you got to understand or know the timeline, and that's why I said if I understand it correctly, that was um, before the time of Pentecost where everybody had spoke in tongues and the Holy Spirit was upon everyone who was, and, you know, everybody understood each other in the time of Pentecost. And, um... Like I said I don't I don't know all of this for sure I'm still learning but I I kind of still even after that experience I had my doubts and my questions about what I was hearing about the speaking in tongues and that you know everybody should be speaking in tongues and then he felt pressured I felt pressured that something was wrong with me because I couldn't do it again after that one moment it just felt like forced or I was doing it. It didn't feel the same as it did that moment. And I just quit doing it because it just didn't feel right. And and, and I just like, I didn't hear that, you know, you're not saved if you don't have the Holy Spirit. But that they believed everybody should be speaking in tongues and you don't have the Holy Spirit. And I'm like, hmm, it just didn't jive with me very well. So, just before I moved here, I was looking for a church that was in a familiar area since my mother was already here. And one church that I found had it posted on their website, a thing of scripture, that, wow, when I read it, it was like a piece of the puzzle that had been missing for me. I finally understood what it was that had made me feel... Um, uncomfortable about the whole speaking in tongues issue. It's not that I, you know, I believed it, but I just didn't feel like something was right about what I had been learning about it. And there is a whole book in the Bible that tells us um, exactly how to use the speaking in tongues. And, you know, that there should be a uh, there, the, God's not a God of chaos, that there should be an interpreter. And um, speak one at a time, you know, and things like that, and, uh, then there's other scripture that I had found, too, that says some are called to be teachers, some are called to be, um, preachers, some are called, or, you know, some speak in tongues, and I'm like, well, it says some, it doesn't say all, and I know not everybody's called to be a preacher, not everybody's called to be a teacher, you know, so, and, and then tongues is listed in there too, so obviously that's saying that, no, not everybody is supposed to speak in tongues, so, uh, you know, just from what God has shown me through the word of God, and not from the mouths of, you know, anybody else, I've come to understand that yes speaking in tongues is real god can use that still but people are maybe misusing it don't really understand it or teaching it wrong they're not following and and not doing it scripturally and like i said misusing it not doing it for the glory of of God, they're not doing it for the glory of God, and they're not using it for the edification of the church. So, kudos to you again, Pastor um, David, for sharing that and pointing that out. So, thank you. I wanted to share, and I hope you'll let me post this to your video. God bless you.